Uh, thank you. I, I am not a native of Sacramento. I'm native of the Bay Area. But I went to school at UC Davis in the early 70s, taught at Winters High School for 37 years. And about the last 10 years, I started doing research on semi-pro baseball in the Sacramento area. Okay, so I started studying all kinds of leagues, Sacramento Valley League, Placer, Nevada, county, rural, Mexican-American, et cetera. I've done research, not complete research, on all of those. My focus right now is on the Sacramento Winter League. Sacramento Winter League started in 1914 and to my research so far, went up until 1991. Continuous through World War I, World War II, other events, continuous. The founder of the Winter League was James Panama Murphy. He's like the father of semi-pro baseball in the Sacramento area. He, Nicknamed Panama, it has to do with the Panama hat that he continuously wore. He was a manager, he, was organized, he organized the playground leagues. He was actually secretary of the Sacramento Senators uh, for a couple years. One of my goals here tonight, or today, is just to kind of jog your memory about a few of the things. Many of you lived this. I just researched it. So just a few little uh, reminders, some of the fields, McKinley Park, McClatchy Park, Southside, Renfrew Field, Tahoe Park, 28th and C, 15th and C, a lot of ballparks in this area. <clears throat> One of the things that, that really quickly came to my mind was the fact that baseball players in Sacramento, it was a fraternity. This is not the first gathering of old ball players. They, this was in 1938, Joe and Jack O'Neill's beer bust. Um, and, but they had these things throughout the years. They had uh, the Bushers Ball to help raise money for uh, insurance for the, for the ball players. So they've been gathering for many years and it is great to see that kind of tradition resuming today. Players, there was tons of brothers who played over the years, and these are just a few. These are, there's a picture of the Stathis brothers. Stathis, McNamara, uh, Bertolani, Visitator, Latino, Dunlop, Rooney, O'Neill, so on. <clears throat> this is a, supposedly the Winter League started, according to some rumors, because they were trying to put together teams to beat the Rooney O'Neills. The Roonies and the O'Neills were cousins. Some of the Roonies were cousins. Uh, and they could basically put together a whole team of brothers and cousins. Christian brothers. Yeah, I think a lot of them were. Um, some, some of the players played for years and years in the Sacramento Winter League. Dewey Elliott supposedly pitched over 1,000 games, not all in the Sacramento Winter League, but supposedly in his career, he pitched over a thousand games. This is from 1925. I know he was still pitching in the 50s. Larry Manuia. A lot of you probably know that he was playing up into his 50s and so on. So another guy who played in this area for a long time. Now, some players stayed on the same team for a lot of years. Others kind of bounced around. I'm not going to say why these things happen. Maybe the money was better somewhere else. But for our host today, Pete Mikasich, here's a few of the teams that he played on. And, and hopefully I got this correct. There might even be more. Cope Buick, Matt Dreyer, Museo Bakery. Julius Stauschup at 56-57, the GS for title. He hit a grand slam in the championship game to win the title for Julius. And I'm playing for Julius again, for Museo again, Matt Dreyers again. Ended up player manager of Golden Nugget. So a lot, of, a lot of players had long careers in the Sacramento Winter League in the National Division. A lot of fathers and sons who played. Parker Sheehan, which most of you probably don't know, but Ned Sheehan and other son Joe. Harry and David Dunlap, Fer Galley and Tom Galley. Herb Forsch was a third baseman. He played before Ken and Bob. 
Mike Beckrich and his son Mike and many more. One that I came up with recently, I've been, been doing the statistics for the 45-46 Sacramento Winter League, uh, Paul Boa, and this is from Behold the Bushers. How about this for a prediction? Pauly Boa, manager of Mere Acme, is the proud father of bouncing baby boy. So this is like a week or two after Larry was born. Paul is as yet undecided as to which position he will play the youth, but he believes he would make a great third base coach the way he whoops it up. <coughs> good prediction. And, and Paul Boa had a real good year that year. He, he was the uh, MVP of the Winter League. Here, here's a few, just a few of the teams over the years. Maybe some of the players, some of the names. Here, are Pete Mikasich is in this one. Go ahead. Gold Nugget team. And I don't want to embarrass John. I think that's him right there. I think that, that picture's over on the other side. I saw that today. Oh, wait a minute. Go, go back to that one if you can. So. Tell us what you were feeling at that, to that point. <laughs> this is a 24, 25 Heisman clothier. One thing about this, a lot of the guys who played semi-pro baseball in the Sacramento area, a lot of them were, ended up either playing professionally later or were professionals. Some came from the fact that there was a connection to the, the pro league here, the pro team here, but a lot of them were homegrown guys. And a lot of the guys back then, one for example, here's Hugh Duffy right here. He got offers over and over again to go professional. Did not go professional because he had a good job with Standard Oil, didn't want to give it up. So there's a lot of guys that could have gone professional. Folsom Prison. How many of you guys ever played a game at Folsom Prison? <laughs> From the outside coming in, I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Now, a lot, of the, a lot of these pictures that you see around, you can see that same background. I guess every time you went to Folsom Prison, they took pictures. And so a lot of the pictures that exist today are ones that came from playing at Folsom Prison. Now, a lot of these guys went in to play Folsom Prison. <coughs> Ralph Schwamm was actually a prisoner there, and when he got out, he played in the Sacramento Winter League. Here's a few more teams, 41, 42, Al's Clothier. You just wanted to show a few of the, the team names and pictures. Okay, so here's another Julius Style Shop. It was Julius Haberdashery, uh, Julius Min's shop, Julius Style shop. <laughs> Matt Dreyer here. Pete is in this one as well. <laughs> you want you want it back so you can? Okay. Uh, California Loan and Jewelry. <laughs> now, again, baseball was life for these guys. So I want to end up here. I found this in 1915 Winter's Express newspaper and this is kind of baseball in life the way it is for many of you and the way it was for many of these players. They, the ball player's prayer. Lord help me to play the game. It matters not to you whether I am talented or poor in natural gifts, wealthy or starving, a leader among men or a simple follower so that I play the game as you would have it played. Help me to keep my eye on the ball, that the curves of temptation not deceive me. Keep my feet in the path of righteousness, that I may touch second and third on my way round the bases. Help me to beat out my bunts, and hold me that I stray not too far from base when the catcher is ready to peg me. Count not my foul balls against me, O oh Lord, for the batting eye sometimes goes wrong though the intention is right. Help me in the pinches, Lord, because a good bingle, which is a hit, might bring my brother home. Let not the music of the fans keep my eye from the ball, nor the enticements from the slab man, the pitcher, draw me away from the need of a clean single with a man on second. Help me, O oh Lord, to bat over 300, because my eyes are on the big league for eternity, even while I sojourn here among the bush leaguers. And, 
And that, and that, that's on the back of this handout if you want to get one. <laughs>